We would like to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Sonic Electronics. So check them out for great deals on speakers, head units, amps, subs, wiring, etc. Use discount code PROVOBEAST for an instant 5% off your next purchase during checkout. PROVOBEAST do another install today. Today we're doing a amplifier and subwoofer install on this 2013 Chevy Cruze. We're going to show you within this installation how to run all the wiring needed for the amplifier and uh, really getting everything set up inside the trunk. So first things first, what we're going to do is run our power wire from our battery area to the trunk area to our amplifier. Okay, here we are in the engine bay. Now our battery is up front here on this cruise. A couple of options here, you can actually attach your power wire right to the main stud here on the battery positive terminal or you can go right to this stud here as well. Make sure you are in front of both fuses. We don't want to put more amperage load on those factory fuses. So either this stud or that. We're going to find firewall access through the factory grommet as you can kind of see back there in the center frame. And we're going to run the power wire along the driver's side kick panel all the way to the trunk area. All right, here under the steering column, what we've done is pushed our wire all the way through. Now what we also connected to our coat hanger is our power wire and we wrapped it in tape. We put a little WD-40 on the, on the rubber up there so that when we pull this wire through, it'll slip through with, a, with ease. Give it a good tug. Gives me a nice, there it goes. Okay, on the other end of things, as you can see, we pulled this wire right on through. We're gonna give, us our, give ourselves plenty of length. Now, as you may notice, Kicker put these two heat shrinks on each side of our wire cover, meaning this is gonna allow us to cut here to install our inline fuse, just so our covering around the wire itself doesn't fray all the way back up on both ends. So that'll keep everything in place. We're gonna put our inline fuse in this position, and then we're gonna work our wire up to connect to this stud here on the fuse distribution block. Okay, so we went ahead and got our fuse holder and fuse mounted there. Um, it's actually just sitting right in this little pocket, but it's all zip tied and nice and tight. Um, and we're going to go right to that stud there. Once we're ready, we'll connect that. Um, at this point, we are pretty much good to go under the hood. Let's go ahead and start running our power wire along the driver's side kick panels all the way to the trunk of the car. Okay, so you can actually just get your fingers up underneath, give it a good pull to pop these clips off, allowing you a little bit of space. Now with this wire, it's actually not that big. So either you can pop these panels off or if you want, you can just tuck the, the actual power cable up underneath the panel and just make sure it's up out of the way so it doesn't slip out from underneath the kick panel. Um, you'll do this either removing the panel or tucking it all the way to the back. Okay, so as I start running this wire, you'll notice I'm running two other wires with it. One is our remote turn on the wire. And what we've done is here in the fuse box, we tapped into this fuse right here, which is your front cigarette lighter. We pulled that fuse out and used a mini ATA circuit. Go ahead and Google that, but an ATA circuit allows you to tap into an existing fuse safely, retaining the original fuse, but adding an additional circuit to that same spot to allow you to add an accessory. Uh, pretty cool stuff. So we tapped in that fuse, we put a 10 amp fuse on our remote turn on wire ran that down and then we also ran a base knob that came with our kicker amplifier so we have those three wires we're going to be running those all the way back all right so we continue just to tuck it all the way down we tucked it up underneath the seat fed it through with our hand to this point now we have our base knob remote turn on wire and power wire we have a little bit extra so we'll bundle it away but we're going to mount our amplifier right to this little square location. Now at this point, that's all run. We're going to get our amp screwed down and we're going to run our ground wire and then work on our RCAs, which we're going to tap into speaker wire from behind our radio. All right, so we went ahead and mounted our amplifier. In this location, as you can see, right on the back of the seat, it'll clear uh, the back opening as the seat shuts. Now we pulled back our carpet here and clean off the paint because we're going to put a nice uh, bolt in that location. We're going to go ahead and get our ground mounted to that point and then run our ground 
along with the power wire to the amplifier. All right, so we went ahead and hooked up our power, our ground, our remote turn on wire and our speaker wire which will run over to the, the trunk area for the sub. Right there is our ground. It's in a great location. It's a nice bolt. It's not going anywhere. And at this point we're going to start zip tying the wire, cleaning everything up so we don't have any miscellaneous wire just up underneath our panels. Finally here we're going to run our RCA cables all the way up to the front of the car and tap into our main radio there for our speaker wire and that's where we're going to use our line out converter all right so from our amplifier we ran our rcas just along underneath same technique we're just going to be tucking our rcas working our way up to behind our radio now as an alternative you may argue well you can tap into the speakers and the back doors which you certainly can for a signal but then that requires you to pull apart the B pillar so you can access the speaker wire to each door. Since unfortunately, this cruise does not have speakers in the back rear deck. So the easiest way, all in one location, is to quickly pop the radio out so we can tap into those speaker wires from behind so the So we radio. need to go ahead and remove our radio in order for us to tap into the speaker wire. So from our RCAs, we can hook into a line-out converter. And uh, that's going to be accessible back behind the radio itself. So to get to it, we're going to have to do a couple things. Um, we're gonna first, remove the side vents. As you can see, using a panel tool, it's not going to damage anything. Now we're gonna move the, the trim bezel up and around the gear shift. Just take your time so you don't scratch anything up here. Okay, next thing here is we're gonna have four screws, one, two, three, four, nine, 30 seconds, go ahead and remove those. And you're gonna have to also remove the two screws on our little pocket down below. This pocket will come free. And finally, the last two screws on the bottom part of the your AC HVAC panel. Okay, using the panel tool, go ahead and Okay, just these two top clips, they're nice and tight, so just take your time. Okay, finally, now we can remove this portion that actually covers the radio itself where we're trying to gain access to. We have one, two, three, and four. And your final two screws. Now really our purpose by pulling this radio out is so we can tap into our speaker wire outputs on the back here. Now it's in this main harness. This is going to allow us to um, have our speaker signal and essentially provide signal to our RCs, to our amplifier, so it knows what to play. All right, so we pulled our main harness out, and the four wires that you'll need to tap into for a line-out converter are blue and brown-blue, and yellow and yellow-black. Now your blue and your solid blue is your left front positive, brown-blue is your left front negative, solid yellow is your right front positive, and yellow-black is your right front negative. 
So you're going to hook your line out converter into those four wires, hook your RCA cables into that line out converter, and then we're going to reassemble the dash. Okay, so we've tucked our RCA cable. Now there's a kind of a little panel that you can actually tuck it up underneath. We ran it right here. This side panel actually just pops on off. There's just a few clips and it comes on out, allowing you access to pull the RCA cable up into the dash. Now we have our line out converter all hooked up. What I did is I cut those four wires, stripped both ends, and then twisted in and crimped together through the insulated butt connector. The actual wire itself all is one piece. So there's no exposed wire and all four wires of the line out converter are hooked up. Now these brown ones are grounds. If uh, by chance you hear buzzing or a ground loop inside the speakers, you can actually ground these up. Uh, we're not going to hook them up, um, but in the event we have that issue, that's what we would go to first. So at this point, let's go ahead and now connect our radio harness back into our radio, start reassembly, and do a test. All right, we have the engine running just to charge up the battery. But before the, obviously you start the engine, make sure your negative has always been off the battery. So you'll want to go ahead and put your positive on that stud there. As you can see, everything's cleaned up and good to go. Perfect. Nice and clean. So you can go ahead and shut the hood, clean up in the trunk, and make sure the center console is all back together and we're just about done. Okay, so go ahead and get everything plugged back in, but don't quite reassemble until you test everything to ensure the amplifier is working. Once you've done so, go ahead and reassemble in reverse order as the way we pulled it apart and uh, go from there. Okay, so we got the, uh, the center console all put back together, tested it, works great. Amplifier is all hooked up and nice and clean. We have a 10 inch kicker. And a little ported flat box there. Nice thing is this just folds right on out of the way. If you have any questions about this install, just go and post a comment below. Thanks guys for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.